Hey guys, the process of developing a vocabulary as a musician is a very, very long process because every line you learn, you have to play many, many, many times to really get it down. So in my experience, it's well worth your while to use all of the pieces of vocabulary that you do have down in as many ways as possible. In this video, I'm going to show you guys a transcription I did. There are a, a few excerpts from a transcription I did of Russell Malone playing over the tune Autumn Leaves. Um, it's with Ron Carter on bass. And I'm going to sort of try to weave together something that I noticed that he's doing um, because it's kind of something that I do too. And I think just about every really good improviser I've known does the same type of thing in sort of various ways. Um, but just to start out, I'm going to get right into these transcriptions. They're not in any particular order, like, but they're all from the same solo. I'll put a link to the solo in the description. It's just a YouTube video that I pulled the audio out of. Um, but anyway, here is excerpt number one. Circled in red, I have the piece of vocabulary that I want you guys to focus on for this excerpt. It's a G minor arpeggio followed by an E flat major 7 arpeggio starting on the 7th. It's a nice little line, and it's one that I actually use a lot in my own playing, which is why I first noticed it when I was listening to this video. I want you guys to keep it in mind because the next clip is going to have the same piece of vocabulary, but it's going to be over a different chord. So check this out. Here is number two. Here, even though you're just hearing a pedal tone in the bass, you're hearing Ron Carter pedal on the fifth, which is F. The chord changes that Russell Malone is playing over are very clearly what I have written, the two, five, one. He's playing altered over the five and resolving it to the third of the one chord after that. Um, so it's very clear that he is thinking of that 251. And again, circled in red, you can see my piece of vocabulary. It is the exact same thing. It's the same finger shape on the fretboard. He just moves it to a new key. He starts it on D, which is the third of that B flat major seven chord, and it works really well over that chord too. Okay, here is example number three. This is the last example that I'm going to show you. He actually does use this lick more times than I'm showing you in this video, in this solo. Like, he plays it more. Um, but I just chose three, I thought, really good, distinct um, examples of different ways he's using it. So check this out. Listen to this one. Okay, so here he displaces it by two beats. He doesn't start it at the beginning of the measure like he did in the other couple times. He starts it on beat two, so he plays the G minor arpeggio over the E flat major seven, which sounds really nice. And then in the middle of the line where he plays the E flat major seven arpeggio, he's actually playing that over A minor seven flat five. So here's a cool example of how he realized that E flat major seven and A minor seven flat five are basically the same sound. They come from the same key and you can use that lick over both of them. So he just started it um, two beats into one measure and then finished it out on the next measure and it sounds great. Uh, so there you have three examples of how Russell Malone took one piece of vocabulary that he learned and got lots and lots of mileage out of it. So now I'm going to show you how to practice this. All right, so let's say you have a new piece of vocabulary. You learned a lick, whether you, you know, maybe you transcribed it from someone, or maybe you made it up and you've practiced it a few hundred times. You've learned it in a few different positions, some different fingerings up and down the neck, and you're ready to get the most out of it that you possibly can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Russell's lick, which was, and I'm going to show you how I might practice it over a new tune. So I'm going to use all the things you are. 
And I'm just going to go through the first like eight measures or so chord by chord and show you the ways I've discovered that I could use this thing. Um, and then I'm going to play over a backing track the whole form just so you can kind of hear what it might sound like as I'm actually practicing, you know, getting this into my playing. So the first chord we have in All the Things You Are is F minor, which is the sixth chord of the key, A flat. And I've discovered two cool ways that I might play this lick over this chord. The first way is pretty straightforward, just starting on the root. Um, and the second way is the one that I'm going to pick for right now, is starting on the fifth, which is C. So I'm going to pick that one just because I think it's a little bit more interesting. But you could pick either one, and I might play the other one um, for practice too, but uh, this is just one example. So that's the first chord. And the second chord is B flat minor. And one option I could have is the exact same one starting on C, but I would rather start this one on the fifth of this chord. So I'm going to move it up to F. So here's my first chord and my second chord. And then on the E flat, what I'm going to do is just play a straightforward altered E flat line. I probably, if I wanted to, could make um, this lick somehow work over an altered chord, but I don't really want to, just because I'm going to be using it on basically every other chord, and I think it, it just gets a little bit overwhelming um, to try to do that. So I'm just going to play like uh, some type of um, E flat altered. And then on the A flat, I'm definitely going to use it. Um, just like Russell played it on the B flat chord, he started on the third. Um, so I'm going to start it on C again, the third of A flat. That's probably the most common way that lick is used. That's how I'm usually using it. And then on the next chord, which is D flat, I will start it on the third of that chord, which is F. And then I'll play something over the G7 that's like G altered sounding. And then on the C major 7, I can start it on E. So now my solo is going to sound like of the first eight bars of All the Things You Are will sound like this. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how I'm thinking. What I'm going to do now is just turn on a backing track and show you guys what it will sound like as I'm practicing this type of thing through the entire form. <laughs> Okay, so that's what it sounds like when I'm trying to practice playing my vocabulary over lots of different chord types. I get a piece of vocabulary that I like how it sounds, and I figure out 
all these places I can use it, and I just start bombarding a tune with it. And it's a great, great thing to practice because it just sort of, you know, keeps your brain on overdrive. Um, and then when you play, you start to see different patterns. And um, sometimes even after you work on stuff like this for a long time, you might have a lick that you haven't even done this with yet, and you'll find yourself playing it over different chords because you've practiced doing that so much that you just start to see the relationships between different chord types, which I think is really cool. And also you kind of start to develop a unique sound that, you know, just the way you play over everything. If you start just practicing your vocabulary over as many places as you can, you just develop this sound of all your vocabulary of how it sounds because you're not just learning a different piece of, you know, something for each chord as you go along. You're just, you know, developing a vocabulary that's yours and you know how to apply it to everything. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. And before I go, I just want to say a quick word about Skype lessons. I've had a lot of fun teaching some of you guys Skype lessons over the past few months. If you want to set up your first free trial, there is no strings attached to this first lesson. And some guys have even said, hey, I can't afford lessons. Can we just do the free trial? And I'm totally happy to do that. I like meeting you guys. It's fun for me. Um, so send me an email if you want to do that. And if you're doing lessons, what I've been doing is you can send me clips of your playing throughout the week, and I will critique them um, and tell you what I think might need work or what I like or whatever. And I don't charge extra for that because it's fun for me. Um, so I just do that for fun. Um, anyway, please send me an email if you're interested in setting up that first free lesson. And I will see you guys next time.